Hi there and welcome everyone. It's Jennifer. I hope you're having a great day. Well, it's fall and that means it's time to start cranking out some holiday cards. So I have one for you today. I'm going to show you how to create a fun snowfall background. Now this technique could work with a variety of embellishments. I have a new one to show you today, but you could do it with glitter or microbeads, lots of different things you could use. But before we get started, I wanted to mention that this card was very heavily inspired by a great card by my friend Christina over at mypapersecret.blogspot.com. Now, Christina is an incredible artist, and she said that it would be okay for me to create this video inspired by this lovely card that she created. I love her version of it, and I will link to it so you can find it easily. And I also, by the way, just wanted to throw this in here. Christina is also an incredible author, and she wrote the book of Unknown Americans. This is an incredible book, and if you haven't checked it out, I thought I'd mention that you should look into that too. Okay, so let's get started on the card. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding note card. I'm using some um, post-it tape to mask off the sides of this. You could instead use washi tape, whatever you have. I just wanted to kind of give myself some guidelines to add the snow background that I showed you. You could instead also use a pencil and a ruler to kind of ma uh, mark off the area in which you're going to put your snowfall. But I found that this worked very quickly and easily and I can reuse these pieces on another project. Once I have the two sides and the top of the card kind of masked off an even amount on each side, I'm going to start adding glue right up against the edge. I'm putting lots of dots of glue right along that top line there, but not going over the tape. I'm just staying inside on the blue cardstock. I'm using multi-medium. It's a matte finish adhesive from Ranger that is super strong. I have a fine tip added to it so that I can get nice precision. I'll link to that also. And I'm putting tiny little dots of this adhesive all over towards the top of this opening that we have masked off. Now the farther down I get, I kind of space my dots out a little bit so that the little embellishments we add are more concentrated towards the top of this open area. Now you could use any strong liquid adhesive here. I highly recommend something super strong. Glossy accents would also work, but this dries matte, so that's why I really like it and it's very strong. You can see all the tiny little dots of adhesive and I'm going to quickly add some prills. Now this is a new product to me. They are like micro beads, but there's a mix of sizes. So there's smaller pearls and bigger pearls. They're called prills, P-R-I-L-L-S. I'm using the pearl color. I'm gonna show you some others here in a moment. So I shook those on and I'm going to just set that aside to let it dry. You wanna make sure that you give this some time to dry before you mess with it. And then you can knock off any extra that might easily come off. And wherever you put that adhesive, it will hold on nicely to these little pearls and it makes a fun snowflake background. Now while I let that dry a bit, I wanted to go ahead and show you the different prills that I have here. These are a few different options that I got. I just picked some of my favorite colors or things that I thought I'd use often. There are a lot of color options available in this and I will link to them. You can see that there are tiny little beads and they are kind of like pearls, I guess I should say, in a variety of sizes, which makes them very unique and they would be great inside of a shaker card. So some of them even have a mix of colors like this one has a few different colors some pools and some greens mixed together so be sure to check out the different options i plan to get some in red and green also for the holidays i really thought the pearl color was perfect for this snowy background while that continues to dry let's go ahead and create the little elf that you see here this elf is new from my favorite things it's part of the santa's elf set i believe it's called I'm stamping it with My Favorite Things Black Hybrid Ink on Nina White cardstock so that I can do some Copic coloring. I stamped it twice so that if I mess up the first one, I have another one ready to go. Now, I am not gonna take a lot of time to show you all the Copic coloring here because I didn't really do anything profound or fancy or even all that great. I just did some quick coloring. I used two or three shades of the same color and just did some basic shading. I wanted to mention that this stamp set is from a larger stamp set with lots of adorable images. You can see there is a cute little present in his hand. I can't get over how cute this image is. Cute little present in his hand, but I do plan to cut that off and replace that with a heart. So I'm just trying to kind of stretch these stamps and get some different looks out of them. For his face, I just used E50 and E53. I like to keep my skin tones very simple since I kind of struggle with them. And then I go and add a little bit of R30 to the cheeks, just right on top of what I have, and it blends on its own since that paper is already saturated with the color behind it. 
Now to finish this little guy off, I used some dark gray Copic markers for his little shoes. I wanted them to look black, but I think dark gray is better so you can add a little bit of shading. And I added just a little bit of C1 just to the white areas on his hat and around his cuffs. So it just gives a little bit of shading. And then I brightened some of the white areas with a white gel pen. Now after I was done with him, I'm using my scissors to cut him out. There are matching dies available, but I wanted to cut this little present out of his hand so I could replace it with a heart. I really like to fussy cut and cut right up to the edge of the image, so that's what I decided to do here. But by all means, you could use the matching die to cut it out and then just cut the present off of the result. Okay, so now it's time to pull this card together. I'm going to admit to you, I had a terrible time pulling this all together. You're going to see that I changed directions many times here. I decided to leave this in the video so you could see that this happens sometimes and how I kind of overcame it all. Okay, so after removing the post-it tape, I'm really happy with the pearly snowflakes falling down and the cute little elf. Just need to create my little heart to put in his hand. So I die cut a heart and then I use the same red Copic markers to color it. And that way it's a perfect match to my little elf and I didn't have to fish around for matching cardstock. My current plan here is to white heat emboss the sentiment right underneath the elf onto the note card itself. So I am stamping the sentiment from the same e.l.f. stamp set with Versamark ink and adding white embossing powder. So I, at this point, was unsure about this because that bright white embossing powder doesn't look so great with the pearly snowflakes. It actually makes the snow look dirty, which is not the effect that I was going for at all. But at this point, I'm going to go with it and see if in the end it all comes together okay. So what I do here is I put some adhesive on the back of my little elf and add him right onto the card. And then I used some foam adhesive tape behind the heart so that it kind of popped up right out of his hands. And here it is. This is the point where I realize I need to for sure cover up that white heat embossed sentiment. So I'm going to show you how I went about hiding that. Maybe this will help you out in a future card because I wanted to make sure that I could resurrect this guy. So I trim the background a little bit down and you'll see that I have a little white arch that he's standing on. Now that white arch is going to allow me to replace and cover up the sentiment that I didn't like there. So this little white arch I cut with a Simon Says Stamp die. It just cuts an arch. I'm cutting this from some pearly white cardstock. So this will match the pearly snowflakes we have falling down. This is actually a pearly white note card and I'm just cutting out some strips from it. So I'm running this die through twice, slightly offset, so I end up with this thin arch strip. You could instead just cut a thin strip, a straight strip, to do this if you wanted to. So I also have a piece of blue cardstock that is cut to the same width that I've cut my background piece down to. I'm going to go ahead and put glue on the back of this arch and glue it right towards the top of this pool piece. And by the way, my note card in the back there is a pearly white to match that little arch that we created and to match the pearly snowflakes. So now all of our little whites have that pearly look to it and it matches much nicer than that bright white embossed sentiment I had before. So I cut away the blue cardstock that's above that white arch and now look at this. I can put this right on top of that sentiment and completely hide what is underneath and nobody will ever know. So now on this piece, I decided I wanted to do a black heat embossed sentiment. I thought that would stand out much nicer. So I am stamping with black VersaFine ink right underneath that white arch. And then I will add clear embossing powder to give it a little bit of shine. So after heat embossing this, I can cut the bottom off and we're ready to put this on top of the white heat embossed image. So we're completely going to hide it. Putting adhesive right over that sentiment, pop my new piece on and nobody will ever know. So if you ever create a card and you put a sentiment somewhere where you don't like it, try to think of a way to use thin strips to hide the piece that you glue on top. It really can save the day when you don't want to start over on a card. And although I changed gears a few times from having a big blue background to a small blue background and changed up the sentiment, I feel much better with the results at this point. Okay, so I used a white pen to add some bright spots to his outfit and also used Wink of Stella, the clear Wink of Stella, to add lots of shimmer to the heart and the little bell on his hat. I wanted this stamped piece to be raised on the card, so I put adhesive on the back of it and then adhered to it a piece of white craft foam that I cut slightly smaller than it. This will give a nice, even raised dimension behind it. 
People often ask what kind of adhesive works best with this craft foam. I usually use my stamp runner, just a regular tape runner, but this double-sided adhesive tape really holds well. So if you're having trouble with the adhesive you use, get some inexpensive double-sided adhesive that's strong and that should do the trick. Then I'm gonna glue that to the center of a pearly shimmer note card. It was at this point in this card that I started doing happy dance because I was relieved that it finally came together. Sometimes it's a struggle, but it's still fun. Just a few finishing touches. I added some tiny dots, a few more tiny dots of the multi-medium to the background, just so I could add a few more snowflakes falling down with the prills. And then I also put a really heavy coat of glossy accents on the heart so that it would really stand out. So there you have a way of creating a snowy background. You could use glitter or microbeads if that's what you have instead. And again, if you mess up on a card, don't give up. Sometimes you can just hide things and nobody will ever know. If you're interested in these products, I link to the main ones below in my YouTube description. But for the full list, head over to my blog at jennifermaguireinc.com and I'll have a lot more information there. I appreciate you watching today and I hope you'll return again soon. Have an awesome day.